Hello, everyone. It's Monday. It's President's Day. It's uh, February the 15th. Uh, you can tell probably by, by the tone of my voice, and you know, I'm excited to report to you on the numbers that we have today. Uh, it's still terrible beyond belief to think that we've got 13 dead in the state of West Virginia since we were together on Friday, but at the same time, Boy, that, that sounds one heck of a lot better to me. You know, our uh, 2200th death in West Virginia is a 79-year-old female from Berkeley County. Our 2201st death is a 93-year-old male from Preston County. Our 2202nd death is a 72-year-old male from Cabell County. Our 2203rd death is a 74-year-old male from Grant County. Our 2204th death is a 78-year-old female from Barber County. Our 2205th death is a 68-year-old female from Kanawha County. Our 2206th death is an 81-year-old male from Cabell County. Our 2207th death is a 99-year-old male from Monongahela County. Our 2208th death is a 76-year-old female from Kanawha County. Our 2209th death is an 81-year-old male from Harrison County. Our 2210th death is a 71-year-old male from Marshall County. Our 2211th death is an 84-year-old female from Lewis County. And our 2212th death is a 53-year-old male from Ohio County. Again, I ask for your prayers for all these great people. And, uh, and I'm going to read to you in just a few minutes about a correctional officer that we lost. But uh, I'll do that in a minute. But it's, it's just terrible. This thing has been a killer beyond belief. And, uh, and we got to go on. There's no other choice but... Uh, I ask you to remember all these great people and great West Virginians and don't let them be a number. Don't let them be a statistic. We have 301 new positive cases in the last 24 hours. That is probably skewed by the, from the standpoint of the weekend. Uh, the daily positivity rate is 5.19. We probably didn't test a lot. Our cumulative percent positive is 5.56, and that continues to be just a little bit better, and that's great. Our active cases are down to 11,683. That's 30 straight days that we've gone down in active cases in West Virginia. That's great. Our recovered cases are 113,994. That's really good. If you look at those top two lines, Recovered is the top line, the light blue, and active is the bottom line. And uh, you can see they keep getting wider and wider, and that's very, very, very good. We have 319 patients hospitalized in West Virginia and 80 in the ICU units. And get this, there is no red counties in West Virginia now. Look at our map and think what our map was at one time. Our map at one time, I think, had right at 30 of our counties in red. We have none now. You're doing better, West Virginia. If you're 65 years of age, it's just a reminder and older, please, please, if you get a cold or a sniffle or headache or tired or whatever it may be, go get tested, please. We can give you antibodies that will absolutely probably save your life. If you let it drag along and everything, and by the time we get you tested, you're seven or eight days into this, the antibodies aren't going to do you much good. You have got to treat this, as I've said over and over, just as you would treat a heart attack or a stroke. If you're feeling the least bit bad, go get a test. It costs nothing. It's painless and it can surely save your life. From the standpoint of our vaccine distribution update, last week we hit 106.2% administration rate on our first round doses and 97.3% on our second round doses. 
Our goal continues to be 100% to date. We have injected with vaccine into West Virginians' arms of 391,186 doses. We continue to lead the nation because of all the great partners on the local and the community levels, plus you know, the great work of the National Guard, the DHHR, and all the health officials and all the absolute medical experts that are helping us in every way. You know, um, you know, as of last week's allocation, we have now used 102.8% of all the doses we have received. And this is a monstrous achievement and everything because now when you put first round and second round together, for the first time ever, we have been in excess of 100%. It cannot possibly be any better than that. So for all those that are out there making this happen, congratulations. I've never in my life been more proud. You know, on our pre-registration system, you know, we need you to continue to pre-register. We're still lagging behind in Gilmer, Calhoun, Clay, Grant, Braxton, and Monroe counties. So if you especially are in one of these counties, go online and pre-register. We need you to have that done. It will help you be able to get to your vaccine faster. We need you to get that done. And since we launched this program, we have registered 252,000 West Virginians. And you can continue to register online, but if you have trouble and can't do that, call us. We'll walk you through the whole process. Our Saving Our Wisdom clinics are, held, are, are being held in all 55 of our counties. You know, the clinics are available to West Virginians age 65 and older. There's a full list available on the website. You know, be sure you check weather updates. Names are being pulled from the West Virginia, you know, COVID-19 vaccine registration system to fill out appointments. And, and you know, after all the wait lists are, have been exhausted, I want to encourage anyone 65 and older to go online to register into this system. And naturally, over and over, we've said the same thing. We don't have enough doses to instantaneously go completely all the way around, but we're getting more in, and as we continue to get more in, we continue to make incredible headway. We have now, on people 65 years of age and older, we have now got first-round shots of 136,038 individuals that have received a first-round shot and 60,142 that have got, gotten the full vaccination. You know, again, I say it over and over and over, but I don't know how in the world there could be numbers that you could be more proud of than just that. We have saved a pot full of lives and everything, and that's great stuff. Our vaccine information line is up there. You know, you've got that. Vaccine reminders, again, you really... Get this, get this taboo out of your mind that, that uh, there's, there's something bad going to happen to you with the vaccine. You're going to get COVID or you're going to grow another arm or some crazy stuff. Don't listen to that crazy stuff. We need you to get vaccinated. We have all the antibody treatments. You know, if, you, if we get a test and we can get it to you quickly, it is unbelievable how successful it is. I encourage everyone to continue to take care of the, uh, take advantage of the testing, the free testing that we have. Our free testing map is up there. The drive-through pharmacy people from Walgreens to Frith, we really, really appreciate all the great work you've done. Get this. Our long-term care facilities, now we have 28 outbreaks in our long-term care facilities. It's just gone down, 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 and down. We still have one outbreak in one county, in Fayette County, on a church community, and what a job they've done. Unbelievable. Congrats over and over. Don't let your guard down. Wear your mask. Get that pew in between you and social distance. And absolutely, if you happen to be 65 and above and you could maybe miss a few church services and get your services at home, that would probably be wise right now. 
And a correct, corrections update, there are 43 inmate cases now and 14 staff. You know, the active inmate cases include 24 at Southern Regional Jail and 11 at the Northern Regional Jail. Uh, and then there's a, a, you know, a few scattered out. But let me, let me just say this. Corrections is now mourning the death, and I mentioned this earlier, of a second officer from COVID-19. Lieutenant Delmer Dean died on Saturday at a hospital battling COVID for several months. He was 49 years old. You know, he, uh, he served at the Northern Regional Jail and Correctional Facility in Moundsville. He survived by his wife of 15 years and her two daughters, ages 13 and 10. Lieutenant Dean, or Dean served 26 years for the state of West Virginia. I just think, so many times this has happened. Think about this family. Please, please, please keep all of them in your prayers. Daughters 13 and 10 years old. They have lost her daddy. And a beautiful wife of 15 years has lost her husband to this incredible, terrible, terrible, terrible pandemic. Mm -mm -mm. I am so sorry. God bless in every way. Wear your face mask. Give blood. Don't we have an obligation? Don't we have an obligation to Lieutenant Dean and his family? Don't we have an obligation to the 13 we lost here or the 2,212 great West Virginians we've lost? How inconvenient could it possibly be to wear your mask? I mean, give me a break. How inconvenient can that possibly be? And if you can't breathe in it, we've said don't wear it. How much of an obligation do we really have to give blood? If you've survived this, I think it is an obligation and a blessing that you've had bestowed upon you that we should go give blood. It can save others' lives. Please do that. Now, I've got to tell you a little bit about the weather. I know things are, are tough on the western end of our state right now. We've had ice storms in western West Virginia and, uh, that are going on today and tomorrow, and the travel conditions, you know, probably are not going to be great today and could be really bad tonight. The I-64 corridor will be particularly hit hard. We've got to watch that and everything. But I keep telling everybody just this. We live in West Virginia. It's winter time. Absolutely. We're, we know, we know when the roads are bad and everything, and we should absolutely take all precaution to absolutely watch what we're doing. Black ice is invisible in lots of ways. And you'll just be, be bopping down the road and you just think, well, the temperature I, you know, on my dashboard is showing that the temperature's 34, 35 degrees, so we couldn't have black ice. Please don't think that. Please, please don't think that. You know, help all the people that are snowplow drivers and everything else and look out for them on the roads and, uh, you know, treat, please, you know, try to stay back from our snowplows and do all the things that you have to do. It's wintertime, West Virginia. And absolutely, you've got to take one more level of precaution. And, uh, and so I'm asking, you know, my emergency management division to be on high alert to coordinate a response to this storm. But uh, we've had lots of these storms, and we'll get through it. Just be really careful. Please, please do. That's all i got right now. I'm proud of you. Proud of you, West Virginia. Keep it up. All right, thank you, Governor. Let's now go to Dr. Clay Marsh, our coronavirus czar. Well, good morning, and, and in following up with what the governor said, uh, certainly this is a special day, and, um, and it's a privilege to 
to be able to serve with our great leadership team and certainly under the direction and leadership of the governor. Um, West Virginia is remaining uh, a light for many others to follow, but this light comes with some consistent warnings that we all need to take to make sure that things continue to move forward. There is evolving um, information that's coming out of Israel that demonstrates that even with some of the mutant forms of the virus, following the appropriate vaccination schedule of the Pfizer vaccine, particularly, because that's one that they're using to get both shots gives people a 94% protection. These are people now over 60 years old, and they've now shown that, that this works and under than 55 year old and over as well. It gives a 94% reduction in, uh, in uh, severe disease and a 92% reduction in hospitalization. So in a real world setting with variant viruses, this vaccine works really, really well. And, and we hope that that's further confirmation for all West Virginians that when it is your chance to um, get this vaccine that you will choose to get it. And as we look at the Moderna vaccine and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, we know that these vaccines also offer a substantial benefit, 95% in the, in the standpoint of the Moderna vaccine uh, and an 85 or so percent uh, benefit of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine for severe disease. And all these vaccines protect against hospitalizations and deaths. So it is really important that we choose to do that. The, the governor also asked all of us to make sure that we register in the Everbridge system. That's really important so that we have a, a list of all people in West Virginia so that we can choose carefully from, uh, from that list in our priority scheme to make sure that no West Virginia is left behind and that we are all making sure that we take our turn in line. And the secret, I believe, for our success in West Virginia has been the fact that we've stayed together, that we care for each other, that we are willing to, um, to let others who are more vulnerable go in front of us so that we can protect each other. And because of your commitment, altruism and, and service to others, what we've seen over the first five weeks of January related to our number one priority, which is saving lives, I think has been extraordinary. We have seen a 66% reduction week to week through the first five weeks of January in deaths from COVID-19. And that's not to say that we're out of the woods and that's not to say that we should stop doing all the effective things we can do. Tom Frieden, who used to be the director of the Centers for Disease Control, believes that this reduction that we're seeing in West Virginia and also seeing around the country in the rate of transmission, the, the infection rates of, of COVID-19 and, and hospitalization rates are as much related to people being really, really good about wearing masks and staying physically distanced and trying to stay in, not travel as much as it is to the vaccines. But I believe this combination of what we're seeing in West Virginia, which is people really committing to staying together, to supporting each other and serving each other, and the fact that we've had such an effective vaccine rollout, and we've targeted the populations that are really the ones that die most consistently from COVID-19, our nursing home population and our elderly population, I think it's making a big difference. And thank you for that, West Virginia. All right, thank you, Dr. Marsh. Next, uh, we'll go to retired Major General Jim Hoyer, the director of the Joint Interagency Task Force. Good morning. Just to reinforce a couple of things that the governor pointed out, we had another great successful week, 102.8%. Uh, uh, if you look at some of the trackers nationally, uh, according to Bloomberg, we lead the nation in both supply used and second doses administered. Uh, we, again, want to thank, as the governor pointed out, all of our partners across the spectrum, from local, state, federal partners, uh, all of those involved uh, who are making this happen. It's exceptionally uh, uh, a great news for us. And as the governor points out, every shot in an arm potentially saves a life. Uh, we would ask that you pay attention this week to uh, the weather and to the data provided by your local entities who are providing the vaccine clinics. 
Uh, we are going to focus not just from uh, the vaccine clinic standpoint, but also from getting the doses out of the hubs into the locations, focus on safety. So we'll have a great emphasis on that this week as we uh, battle through the challenges that the, the weather provide us. I would again reinforce what both the uh, governor and uh, Dr. Marsh said, please register. Register helps, registering helps us plan and prepare for what we need to do to, to have that level of execution that we have going on right now in the state of West Virginia. And the last thing I would uh, leave you with is uh, uh, from me and my family to the Dean family and our corrections family, uh, send our thoughts and prayers for, for the loss of a great uh, West Virginian and a great public servant. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, Secretary Bill Crouch from the DHHR and Dr. Ayn Amjad, our state health officer, are also joining us today and are available for questions. We'll now go to questions from members of the media. The first today from Charles Young with WV News. Hi, this is Charles Young with WV News. Um, I wanted to know a little bit about where our testing levels stand. Um, and, you know, I know that we have basically been testing less. And I wonder is, are there less cases out there or are we finding less cases because we're testing less? How much is the decrease in testing kind of contributing to these good metrics that we've been seeing lately? Thank you. Well, I'm going to go to General Hoyer and Clay in just one second. But uh, Charles, get this. And I, I just wrote this down just a second ago from the standpoint of uh, I was just looking at all the graphs and looking at everything. Can you imagine this in West Virginia? We have done 2 million 65,565 tests in West Virginia. Now just think about that. Our total population in the state of West Virginia is a million seven and change, and we have done 2,065,565 tests according to this right here. It's amazing. Absolutely unbelievable. General, maybe you'd jump in and, and finish up the question, but uh, but boy, Charles, we have really, we've done good on our testing. Uh, Governor, I think uh, Dr. Amjad and Secretary Crouch may have the most current numbers. I think we were about 9,500, but we still rank at, uh, somewhere between 12th and 16th in the nation for percentage of population tested, but Bill or I may have uh, more specific information. Okay. Yes, this is Bill. Thank you. Uh, uh, and, and Jim is right on target. We're, uh, we are dropping somewhat in terms of the testing that we're doing. Uh, and, and as the governor said, please get tested. If, if you have any symptoms at all, please get tested. If you're concerned, please get tested. We have testing sites uh, available all across the state. Uh, those are listed on the coronavirus.wv.gov website under the free testing tab. It is very important that we not become lax in the detection uh, of this virus. And, and as the governor said, testing is the key to identifying those who may not know they're spreading this virus. So, so please, uh, please get tested. Our, our positivity rates uh, are down, which is, which is good. We're seeing a, a terrific trend. If, uh, if we continue the way we're going, continue to get people vaccinated, wear your mask, as the governor says, uh, we can stay the course uh, with this virus. So thank you. All right. Thank you, Charles. Next, we'll go to Kenny Bass with WCHS and Fox 11. Thank you. This is Kenny Bass with Channel 8 and Fox 11. That's a question for General Hoyer, congratulations on the, the vaccine distribution system successes thus far. But if you could answer a question for me that was presented to me that I can't answer. Uh, a person from Logan County contacted me and said they've registered on the state system a 67-year-old, a 69-year-old, I believe a 70-year-old, an 82-year-old, and an 83-year-old. All at the same time, all with roughly the same information. Not much difference in comorbidities or uh, job status. The three younger people have been contacted and gotten their shots. The 80-year-olds have not. Again, they were all registered at the exact same time on the state system. Can you tell me how specifically that would work? Uh, why the older people weren't called before the younger people? And just as a, a branch off of that question, do you know how many counties are actually using the Everbridge system right now? And how many are still relying on their local lists? And how would we be able to find that information? Thank you, sir. 
So Kenny, to your last point, uh, we do have counties that are still using uh, their local list to to, uh, uh, to finish as we transition to the uh, broader single statewide list. So that may be the uh, the issue that you described. Uh, we did uh, last week, I think we did seven counties that we uh, uh, did the, uh, the final test with. Uh, I can get you the exact numbers on those counties uh, uh, later today, but uh, if individuals continue to have challenges, we ask them to call our hotline because one of the things that we went through this weekend is we had multiple calls to the hotline with questions that we then as a leadership team on behalf of the governor were able to address. We also had a, a, a call from a county this weekend or this Friday uh, where they had individuals because of weather issues who didn't show up that we gave specific guidance to as to how to use and administer the rest of the doses that they had available. All right, thank you, Kenny. Uh, next we'll go to Suzanne Elliott with the Dominion Post. Uh, Suzanne, I think you may be muted if you're if you're there. I'm good right now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I guess next we'll go to Paul Mullen with WCBC. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, panel. Governor, last May you announced a comeback plan, and. Um, I don't want to jinx you as a coach. I know you probably would not want to be jinxed with the good numbers coming, but do you have any plans for a comeback plan from this spike and surge that we have seen? Uh, can we look forward to something like that coming up in the next few weeks? Well, Paul, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I appreciate, I appreciate your words and I don't, uh, you know, I I try as hard as I can in my life to not not get into jinxes and all that kind of stuff. I, I trust in the good Lord, and 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 you know, and and that's what I'm going to continue to do. But uh, but but I, I can tell you that uh, through all this, I guess the the key to everything is all of us should pay really close attention to how much we listen and how much we're a team together. I mean, uh, Paul, I, I mean this with all in me. The great part about our team here is not only are the experts phenomenally qualified and not only are they passionate about what they're doing. I mean, they're not just going through the motion and doing it a couple hours a day and then just saying, well, we'll just see what it is tomorrow. They're digging in every direction to be able to come up with additional information for all of us. But, uh, but Paul, I, you know, I'm an optimist at heart, but I am really, really conservative in the way I think and, uh, and, and how I move. You know, I've said it many, many times about, you know, you're walking through the woods and you look down and 10 or 12 feet away from you is a rattlesnake all coiled up. Well, what do you do? I mean, if you jump and run, you know, you may have an awakening to something really bad. That rattlesnake can't bother you because it's 10 or 12 feet away from you. And what I would tell everybody to do is stand still and look left and look right and look behind you because a lot of times they have a buddy with them and everything. And so, and then once you absolutely are sure of a way to go, then go and go quickly. Be quick, but don't hurry. You know, I, I truly in my life believe that uh, these great experts and what they're doing have led us way down the path. And I've listened. Now, there's times when I've had to, to kind of say, nope, we're not going to do that. We're going to do this. And there's times that I've had to push really, really, really hard on them to absolutely give up any kind of bureaucratic thought and, and say, this is what we've got to do. But really, Paul, I think that we are vaccinating our way out of this terrible pandemic. 
I think it's happening, it's beginning to happen across our nation. And absolutely, I truly believe that we're going to come through this from a health standpoint and be okay. And I also truly believe that from an economic standpoint, those that have been hurting in all kinds of different directions will be okay. The biggest thing that we've done in West Virginia is we have stayed together. We have been transparent amongst our team. Everybody knows what the right hand and the left hand are doing. And absolutely together, West Virginians have pulled the rope and look what we've done. We have shown the world just how good we really are. And so Paul, I think there's a real bright day ahead. I think there's a bright day ahead on economics. I think there's a bright day ahead of, with our kids being back in school and able to play ball and starting to do things that kids need so desperately to be able to do. I mean, we have had a real void in their life, a, a void that could have scarred them for a long, long time. You know, Paul, I can't guarantee anything. This thing may whiplash around with a variant and be right on us again. But for what I know, I'm going to keep going north. That's the best answer I can give you. All right, thanks, Paul. Next to Mark Curtis with Next Star Media. Just wondering about the, I thought there was going to be a change in protocol this week that as of today, uh, essential workers who are age 50 and older uh, could be vaccinated. Is that correct? Or when's the target date for that to happen? All right, General, you've got to do this one, sir. Yeah, Mark, there should be uh, some essential workers over the age of 50 beginning uh, vaccinations uh, this week. And then as we continue to roll out uh, additional doses and using the federal pharmacy program, you'll see more uh, available for that category as we go forward. And just to point out, uh, we are continuing to make significant progress in our over 65 population. All right. Thank you, Mark. Uh, next to Phil Cabler with the Charleston Gazette Mail. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say I'm pleased to be a small part of a TV show that now has had more episodes than the entire run of Gilligan's Island, according to the uh, Sunday Gazette Mail. Uh, my question is, the uh, six counties that are lagging on registration uh, have one thing in common. They're all uh, extremely rural, and we would assume have uh, limited internet access. Uh, what, what can we do to reach uh, people in these six counties who, who can't use the Everbridge system? Governor, I can take this if you want. No, go ahead. Go ahead, please. So, Phil, they can use the Everbridge system because they can call in and they call into that hotline and those individuals working that hotline will help them register in the system. But to your broader question, uh, we are continuing to have ongoing meetings with uh, our African-American task force, with our uh, VOAD team, as well as uh, uh, Dr. Marsh and I will be meeting with the Council of Churches. And as we know in West Virginia, uh, a lot of our population both trust and stay in communication uh, regularly with their uh, faith-based groups that they're a part of. So uh, again, uh, attempting to work those. The other opportunities we have in our rural communities is to use our federally qualified health clinics and our regional clinics who tend to serve our most vulnerable and our older population in the state of West Virginia. So working all those efforts to try to continue to increase those numbers. But I think the good thing is we have identified that we have an issue and a challenge and the governor continues to press us to work to, uh, to get to those numbers that we need to get to. Come back to me just for a second. And Phil, you know, if I could just comment in regard to your TV show, uh, you know, I thank God you've only been a very, very, very small part of the show. And, uh, and, and the only other thing I would add is just this, it's a shame, you know, really and truly when 
the Charleston Gazette or Phil or whomever is just looking for something to make fun of or throw darts at and everything because it would be it would be so much easier on these experts it would be so much easier on me to just come in you know once every 10 days and tell everybody you know here's what's going on and uh and you know it uh but we choose to come and we choose to come because the people deserve to know it is ridiculous ridiculous to say anything but just that and uh and for the charleston gazette out of desperation to try to you know print something that's bad you know is uh is not good and uh you know from a standpoint of if if you just had nothing to do but be a managed politician you know uh it could i guess it could be different but we're no one here is being that along the way if you'll just step back and look at all the different things that we've done you know we have not done them you know on party lines or anything like that we have tried to make people abreast we've tried to laugh and to to make some moments a little bit easier because it's dog tough a lot of times so anyway uh, you know i just think it's a shame that uh, our state so-called newspaper you know opts out to just do more garbage but i guess that's what uh, you know phil you've been a, you've been an expert at that went from the standpoint of uh degrading you know, people that had some level of some kind of handicap, the people that were custodians here or throwing trash towards foster kids uh, speaks a lot for you, Phil. All right, Governor, I'll turn it back to you. Well, I, you know, I, I really congratulate all the people again. I want to say one more time over and over that, uh, you know, when, when you just step back from this and just think of, I could never be more proud. You know, I say it's an honor to fly with you, West Virginia. It's surely been that. It's been a super honor to be with General Hoyer and Dr. Marsh and Secretary Crouch and Dr. Amjad and all the people that work with them all over the place. It makes me really, really proud. You know, uh, to think we've tested over 2 million people you know, and some of them have received several different tests and everything. I know I have along the way as well. But uh, we've tested all kinds of, we've weathered storms like you can't imagine. And now we don't have a red county in the state. We've got oh, well over 100,000 people that are, are elderly that thought they wouldn't be getting a shot, you know, for till April that now have been vaccinated, 60,000 plus of them completely vaccinated. You know, it is amazing across this nation just how good we're doing. It just, it just is absolutely unbelievable. And to throw off on that, no, West Virginia, don't put up with that. Don't put up with the garbage. I love you with all my soul. Let's keep doing good stuff in West Virginia and get through this and then Enjoy some great days in front of us. God bless each and every one of you.